In this video, we're going to continue looking at motion in two dimensions, drawing vector diagrams, and then adding them algebraically. We're also going to look at how to break a, a vector down into its horizontal and vertical components. And then in the next video, we'll look at more complicated examples. So here's your algebraic toolkit. You're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem a lot, and you're also going to be using your trig, your basic trig ratios. And you are going to be using all three, so please make sure that you review that information um, prior to, to trying to solve some of these problems. So let's look at this first example. John walks 350 meters west, turns at an intersection, and continues another 575 meters south. What is his displacement? It is always a good practice to sketch a vector diagram. So because we're not using the scale method, doesn't have to be to scale. Don't even have to use a ruler if you don't want to. If you like to be neat, then you can feel free to use a ruler. So there's our 350 meters to the west, and then 575 meters south. Okay, and then if we want to, um, we can go ahead and we can draw our resultant vector in. So I'm just going to use a different color. So it's always tip to tail. And our theta is going to be in that place. Um, just so that when we're doing the very end and we have to figure out what our angle is, that's going to be the angle that we're looking at. So we want to find our displacement here. So if you notice, that is a right angle. So when it tells you um, do directions, they're always going to meet at a right angle. So you have to make that assumption. So if we have right angles, we can then use um, our Pythagorean theorem. So we've got c squared equals a squared plus b squared. You're almost always finding the hypotenuse here, so you're not really going to have to rearrange that equation. And you should know by now that you're going to take the square root of the square, the sum of the squares. So then we can go ahead and we can put our information in. And you can feel free to do that all in one step on your calculator. Uh, we want to round so that we have three significant digits. So we get 673 meters. So that's our displacement. Okay. Now we need to know our angle because they do, it's not a due direction. There is an angle involved. So Every time you do this, you're going to be using your tan, just in case. I mean, you could use any of the trig functions, but if you made a mistake for some reason calculating that displacement, always best to use the values that were given to you in the question. So to figure out our theta, we'll be doing tan theta, and that's always our opposite over our adjacent and then you're going to be using the inverse because you're trying to find an angle. So you get 59 degrees. So we always went around to whole degrees too. Okay. So then we need to write a therefore statement. Doesn't have to be anything too, too fancy. So the delta D, so our displacement is 673 meters. And then we are going west, due west, and we are going 59 degrees south. Okay. So those directions can be a little bit tricky, but just kind of look at your diagram. So you go west first, and then you go south, and you're going south by 59 degrees. So that is our displacement for um, that. And so that is an example where we're adding perpendicular vectors, so vectors that meet at a right angle. In this example, we're going to look at breaking down a displacement vector into its perpendicular components. And that's going to be a major skill building for actually adding non-perpendicular vectors. So we just looked at adding perpendicular vectors, pretty easy stuff. But um, when we have to add non-perpendicular, we have to be able to do this bit where we're breaking it down into its components. So again, always a good idea to start with a diagram, okay? So we're going to be east, so we've got east, and then we're going 30 degrees south. So our vector is here, okay? Again, it does not have to be to scale. We're just going to add our information in. And so then what we've got is we're going to, I'm going to use different colors. So we're going to say that this is our delta dy. So our blue will be delta dy, and our... Um, let's use green. Our green will be our delta dx. 
So we're going to be breaking it into its components. So we're going to do our x, um, our x values first. So we'll do our delta dx. So what we need to do is we have our hypotenuse and we have an angle. And we're trying to find the adjacent side to the angle. So hopefully you realize that that's a um, cosine function. So our cosine, our cos theta would be x over our hypotenuse. And then if we rearrange that, and the thing is, is this is always going to rearrange the same way. So if you actually look this up online, you're going to see, so I'm just going to rearrange this. So I'd have to multiply both sides by h and then rearrange it. So I'd have cos theta times h. And what you're actually going to see online, and if you want to remember it, that's fine. So you're going to always see that your delta dx is cos theta delta d. And you're assuming that your delta d there is the one that's given to you in the question. So that's always going to rearrange that way. So you don't need to show that rearrangement every single time. So then we can go ahead and we can put our information in. So we're going to have cos 30 times our 45 meters. And we're going to round it to um, three significant digits. We don't generally use our angles when we're counting sig figs. So we've got 45.0, so let's round to three. So we get 39.0 meters, and that's going to be in the east direction, okay? So, because it's pointing to the east. So that's how we calculate our um, dx. So now we'll look at our delta dy. Hopefully I have enough space here. So hopefully you realize that now we're dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse. Um, again, you could switch to a tan function, but you're going to see if you look at this um, in textbooks or in other places online that they're always going to use the sine function. So we've got, so we would have our y over our hypotenuse. So if we rearrange that, you would get y equals sine theta times our hypotenuse. Again, you are going to see that in the future, in your textbook, anywhere else, you're going to see it as sine theta um, delta d. Okay, so you're going to, it's the same as your delta dx, only now we're using our sine function. So then we can go ahead and we can solve. So we're going to do sine 30 um, times our 45 meters. So I apologize, I'm starting to run out of space there. So our delta dy is going to be um, rounded to two sig figs, 22.5 meters, and that's going to be in the south direction. So that is just splitting that non-perpendicular um, vector into its x and y components. So we're going to be looking at this again in the next lesson. So that was it for uh, just looking at our basic two-dimensional um, vector addition, so adding it at perpendicular and then breaking it into its components. And in our next video, part two, we're going to look at adding um, non-perpendicular vectors.